gap between rich and poor in South Africa. Let's not forget that millions of people don't know where the next meal is going to be coming from, especially during this lockdown. Thousands of thousands of people have lost their jobs. Many people are taking to the streets. We've even seen looting in parts of Cape Town and other parts of South Africa because people are indeed hungry. Government has pro pro promised aid. Much of the aid hasn't come to promise 250,000 food hampers to a population of millions that are hungry is not going to solve the problem. So I think government's got a major challenge ahead of it. I think the poor are getting poorer. And I'm just worried if, we're not going to, if we are not going to address the issue of hunger and poverty, it might just spill over into the streets, like we've seen in some areas, and it is dangerous for South Africa, it's dangerous for Southern Africa, and it's very dangerous for this continent. We need to make sure that we feed the hungry. That is why civil society has been in the forefront of trying to make a difference. And yet we see images coming out every day where people are waiting in queues of miles and miles for food. Is yes for me. I see it every day. Like what do you see every day? I was fighting going. Yeah, I was yeah, cigarettes and all this shit. Uh -huh. So what do you think about this ban on cigarettes? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Dead. You can't take it away. A cigarette you can't take away is almost like a, like a stress ball. You have stress, you smoke a cigarette every five minutes. Cigarettes is playing a major role now because you find so many people that smoke cigarettes that's not doing drugs. 
So, and I mean, think about the 10 rand for one cigarette. Ridiculous, but that's how people are making money on the black market. And yeah, they're just capitalizing on it. <coughs> as sad as it may sound, it's the truth. And then you're finding the fat cats are still reaping the benefits. The poorest of the poor are still poor. And they have to battle to get a smoke. Can you imagine 10 bucks, 100 bucks for 10 cigarettes? 200 bucks for 20 cigarettes? And it's fake cigarettes, they're not even a real cigarette. Unfortunately, that's the price that the smoker has to pay. Well, there's no secret. South Africa has very high crime levels. Outside the lockdown, we know that 57 people are murdered every day. We know there are robberies, there are rapes, there are other violent crimes. When the lockdown started, the crime levels went down dramatically and we're still seeing very low levels of crime, which is good. However, we have seen a major increase in the illicit trade. People dealing in illegal cigarettes and these cigarette smugglers are smiling all the way to the bank. You see people selling cigarettes in parking lots. You see people selling and trading openly on cigarettes on Facebook and other social media platforms. Uh, you go to some corner shops, you'll find the shopkeepers are selling you the illicit cigarettes. And that is our concern. The government ban has led to a major dramatic increase in the illicit trade and government is losing at the moment about 35 million rand every day as a result of the illicit trade, as a result of losses of taxes. The money is going right into the pockets of the cigarette smugglers and that is our concern. Oh. Split peas, split mix, um, carrots, potatoes, um, two, uh, two bones and all that. The community to give for the poor because there's always somebody that, that's hungry. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You don't just make stuff and, and just, just dish it out. No. You must give, make something Decent. so that, yes, what you something will eat, will give it to somebody else. 100 liter pot in our sphere, about 250 people, but the difference is. Ons laat die mensen kom met hulle een bakkie sê, want ek spreek hulle voor. We get to kom hier, dit is wat wij doen hier in Kosa. En to kom hier, to kom hier goed dat jy sint. Because dit is wat mensen wil sien. To sê, sê, ek hoop jou vir een brik. Because ons wil hier die mensen wil sien. Ja, we wil hier een paie taakje. Op aarde, en die was nog wat gewoners. We kon nog wat. Ja, ons allemaal doen, ons allemaal doen ons het deel. Ons hy nog beroof nie laat. Yeah. Yeah. Showing the community there is another side. You know, we're not all what people make us out to be. And the one thing I always say is that people don't know our roots. We don't know where we come from. We don't know what caused and contributed to where we are today on the negative side. And then people just use that. They're not interested in the positive side. They will brand you and say, yeah, you're this and you're that and the other. In the meanwhile, you have a heart of gold. You're a human being like someone else. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of these guys that I work with, they have regrets about what they did. So here's an opportunity through COVID-19 to say, listen, there's a positive side of me. You know what I'm saying? I think my biggest passion, what I'm most turned on by is potential. And the potential in South Africa in particular is massive, is absolutely, I mean it's everywhere, the potential is huge and I really believe that a social enterprise approach can deal with the left, the right, the communism, capital, it doesn't really matter, it's about the ownership, it's about how you manage the people, planet and profit. The people here are beautiful, the you know, very diverse, with 11 official languages, the country and the, be the beauty of the country, the resources, the sun is fertile, and um, you've got it's 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 this lovely meeting place in the world, the most diverse biodiversity, the most diverse gene pool. It's just a very dynamic place which has potential, and um, 
And then also I then, I then, I then met some young people who happened to be from Langa and so I ended up doing some work here and then realised in fact this place was where I, I needed, I really wanted to be. You know, there was a general sense in the city that the status quo is entrenched. No one's going to give up advantage. We don't do that. And unless you create space for the other on their terms, it's not going to happen. This really is an opportunity to, to create a Cape Town 2.0 from a black place, a very formal black community with great infrastructure in one of the richest cities on the African continent. If it can't happen here, with all that Langa has, I, I doubt whether it can happen in very many other places, you know. So I think Langa in particular, in particular on this continent is very special and very important. One lot does the marketing and one lot does the selling and they'll get the brand out and we could have produced thousands and it's just, and that's part of the problem that people don't want to work together because you've got the thing that little thing it's like, I don't mind that, it's entrepreneurship still. That's a lovely idea. Yeah, that's a lovely idea. If the uniform is navy, like I was thinking of making for my kids because they, they are that's navy. That's a lovely idea. Yeah. I'm worried about this whole getting this COVID thing, she's on her own. Oh, shame, okay. You know what I mean? So I don't think, I think the saying was stressing her a little bit. But, um, yeah, but it's also not a, a big deal. You know, I think making a mats, it will take you about, if it's already cut up, mm. it will take about. Be entrepreneurial and go, well, where's there's opportunities? And there's so many people who are selling machines and they're all sitting in isolation. So if we set up the collective, mm. that's the intention, you know. Um, one lot does the sewing, one lot does the distribution, and then, you know, we've got relationships with schools, and then we start sort of like a, a factory, but breaks up in people's homes. I put the masala in one of the Miela boxes yesterday. Um, okay. And did you give Cindy some vegetables? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The kitchen's looking a little bit disordered this morning. Though. What we do, we, we don't do township tourism. It's othering, and township tourism is was part of the evolution of tourism in, in townships. So I get where it comes from. So first, nobody came in, then they stopped off on the motorway and looked through the fence, then they started driving through and out, then a few people within the township saw what was going on and would do some table stalls and a few restaurants opened up. So it came from othering. So I, I understand it, but what we are doing, which is sustainable, is not, we, we say we don't do township tourism, we do tourism in a township. So whatever you can do as a tourist anywhere else, you should be able to do here. It's not othering, you're not coming to, it's not voyeuristic. You sleep, eat jazz, experience the people, as you can do anywhere in the world. It's about meeting different cultures, but then you need to be able to eat, sleep, and explore. I'm a professional optimist. I love to kind of go, hmm, now, how do we... Uh, and then, suddenly, things clicked. And in fact, international tourism may have, dried, may have dried up, and that's what townships are dependent on. Cape Townians, South Africans don't go into townships. So if international townships, if international tourism dries up, that's a massive opportunity opportunity to develop domestic tourism staycation that's what everyone's talking about at the moment so we've got 
we've got <laughs> the group within the South African society who have all the wealth, you know, have the wealth, have never been into areas which don't have wealth. So to me, that's an opportunity. Black people have been going from their communities into white communities, formerly whites-only communities, for a very, very long time. How do, we, how do we reverse that? And the beautiful thing, or the opportunity, I should say, around the pandemic, there's been a wonderful mobilizing in South Africa, which they always do, come crisis or sporting triumph. You know, South Africans are a funny lot. You know, they, they on a day-to-day -day basis, they hate each other, but they love everybody from outside. But come rugby or a sporting event, they mobilize and rally around each other and it's a wonderful feeling. So for us as an organization which is trying to promote sustainability, it's not just about sustaining in the, from a South African perspective, it's not just about sustaining um, the planet and resilience in terms of drought. How do we sustain these relationships so that those relationships where we've got um, South Africans, privileged South Africans with more wealth are supporting um, the, le the, the more vulnerable communities in a, in a manner which is really, really spectacular, it's really good to see. But now we need to turn that into regular visits. Come for a coffee, come listen to jazz, come have a homestay, see where your domestic might live, but that can only take place in a clean, green, safe environment. In this shake-up, there's opportunity. We're really concerned, or I'm really concerned, that this free food thing doesn't just descend or create further entrenchment of dependency for townships on, on the other. So what we've been doing, we've been, we've, we've, the activities we've been doing for the last 10 years, we've been able to summarize in this pandemic because the locals that we work with who run this place have stepped up. They're not getting paid, they're volunteering, some money's been moved out of the way, there's something else going on. And so these young guys who are usually ostracized by the community are developing, getting personal growth and development and entrepreneurship through their volunteering. And for us, it's been this light bulb moment. And so they are, we've got young males, we, or we have males in townships who are not within family structures. Either they've dropped out of school, they haven't been to Bush yet, or the lone males who, for whatever reason, have, uh, are socially excluded. Under lockdown, you're meant to be in your home or you're going to be forced into your home. But these guys have to be on the streets to hustle for money to eat. So what we've realised is that we need to encourage the guys to stay at home. So we've been, or I say we, the ambassadors for the organisation who are the youngsters, and there's loads of them, they have been feeding their peers and their, and their uncles and their brothers cooking food in the restaurant behind us, dropping it to their homes, and um, meaning that these guys can stay at home, not be in conflict with the police and the army, and get a meal. That we are converting to an entrepreneurship opportunity. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Oh, 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 ye
Ano sa sa kalo ba? Ano sa ba? For the community and, and for us, it was in the lockdown, nothing to do and there's nothing to just stay there in the corner and nothing to do. Because, because here in the community, yeah, the older, the, our elders, they are not show, yeah, showing us a way forward to do. And it's only us, boys. Mujahitan, <laughs> 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 Help where you can, like my elf. So it's all about taking part. Uh, everyone should be taking part uh, where you can, and also like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I think. And volunteering. It's uh, I, th I know people have a stigma about uh, volunteering. People for uh, for also me uh, at the beginning, I co I couldn't understand uh, volunteering, working without pay, being paid. But then, at the end of the day, it's a it's a social it's a social need. It's social transforming, and it's, it's about community. And also, this organization, what it has taught me, since it's a social enterprise, so there's um, we have three principles: people, profit, planet. And now we are focusing on people. Beside the business side, now it's for the people. We're doing it for the people, for the social need of the people. My name is Aseko, Aseko Mchocheli. I'm not suddenly just going to get up and come in because there's baggage. The whole race fear narrative, black fear. and. Um, we had an event just the other day with the YPO, which is a big global organisation. There's YPO Winelands, made of some of the wealthiest people in Cape Town. We hosted an event here for them. The follow-up conversation we had with that group, they didn't know, they loved, they were, they were blown away. These are Cape Townians, they've been living here for a very, very long time. So we know that we have created a space where people can come together and suddenly realise that the sky doesn't fall in when you come into the township.